Good morning, wrestling fans. Welcome to PWR Today for Thursday morning, August 20th, 2020. I'm the man they call Meathead, and it is a glorious day just to be alive. Happy to talk to you. Happy to hear from you. Make sure you're hitting us up on the, the YouTubes, the Facebooks, the uh, Twitters, the, you know, all the socials that we got, all the streaming platforms we got. You got Twitch, you got Spotify, Fight TV, you know, Apple Podcasts. Give us likes, subscribes, interact with us. We listen, we hear you, and we add to the content all the time. And speaking of adding to the content, adding to this discussion this morning, Damian Nelson. Good morning, Damian. Hello there, Meathead. How are you? I, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling happy. I'm in a good place. You know, I, I'm in a good place, too, because the exterminator came yesterday and uh, got Ooh. rid of all of the crickets. Gotcha. I thought you were just telling dad jokes. I thought that was my department. No, I'm not a, I'm not a daddy. That's what I'm saying. You shouldn't be telling dad jokes. I got dad jokes. Fair, fair enough. Well, you <laughs> embrace in that, and I will continue to be not a daddy. There you go. You're not somebody's baby's daddy. No. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I mean, you know, there was the wild times back in the uh, late 90s, 2000s in uh, Milwaukee. So you never know. Hey, we've got some um, not sad news, but some um, some a uh, little bit more somber news. Um, yesterday popped on the old Internet that uh, Buff Bagwell, former WCW star and one match WWE star, um, was in a very serious car accident. And uh, we know that he is in the hospital right now. We know that um, he um, hopefully is recovering. Um, but right now, it, it looks like, uh, you know, we need to think about Buff Bagwell for a second because he's, uh, he's recovering in the hospital right now. And um, it, it looks like it's kind of severe. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, he was in a car accident a couple days ago. This news broken by, God, who was it? Was another random wrestler? No, uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't catch that. <laughs> it hit the wire, uh, so I took it off the wire. Yeah, so Buff Bagwell, you know, we he's had his issues, and they're very public, and mm -hmm. we wish him the best. He was apparently in a involved in a car accident, and was I don't want to say. Let me choose my words here. He was. He had been. That's why you're found, getting to do it, not me. <laughs> He had been found to be on prescription drugs, so mm -hmm. you can't knock that. And you right. know, meathead, that you can sometimes be assigned drugs that they tell you not to operate heavy machinery, not to right. drive, whatever else, because it makes or you mixed groggy, combinations so. of whatever. Yeah. So let's not jump to conclusions. Let's mm -hmm. not judge. Uh, but uh, unfortunate. Hopefully that uh, uh, Buff Bagwell will get better. And uh, you know, he's had a troubled last few years and. We just wish them the best. That, that's yeah, and that's there. really where I want to go to. I mean, we don't need to focus on that other stuff, and that's just not me. Um, so I just hope he comes back. Maybe he does one of these um, uh, cameo things, and he's back, you know, making a couple bucks here and there. He looks healthy again. That's the part I'm looking forward to is the recovery and the coming back. That's what I want. Same here. Hey, you know what? Uh, in lighter news, are we going to talk about the Thunderdome with Tina Turner? Yes, we are, actually. Um, you know, because we don't need another hero. We don't need another way home. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are younger listening to the show, that is a former, not former, but that is a song of Tina Turner, who now lives in London, uh, anime Bullock. For those oh, you know, Damien, we could do a hold PWR today on that movie. <laughs> Damn, there's some good cake. Have some cake, anime. <laughs> <laughs> Have some cake. Fa, 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 fa. <laughs> <laughs> one of the greatest movies ever it is still a stop and watch for me and it's, it's tragic but it's a great movie right i mean dude literally i break almost every time watching her sing Left a good job after she just got her ass beat by ike yeah i mean it was tough but i mean the I'm, again i'm focusing on the rise of tina turner you know on the back end story where she's up again that was a phenomenal movie. Man, I just so, love Angela Bassett, period. Uh, she's great. Uh, she's been great. She was great, rather, in American Horror Story as well. And uh, mm -hmm. in the, I almost called it the Wakanda movie, uh, Black <laughs> Panther. <Wakanda. laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> the Thunderdome WWE announced late last weekend, early this week, that they're going to yeah. be moving their production to the Amway Arena, and uh, they're going to be producing and making 
a new venture, if you will, which will involve live fans similar to what the NBA is doing. I think it's great. Uh, WWE, they needed to get out of the performance center. I, I, Raw, SmackDown, not necessarily NXT, which we saw last night, obviously, but uh, Raw and SmackDown got to the point of being unbearable just to the sterility yeah. of the environment by which we were watching the shows. There's some great stories, and I think about how great those stories would have been if they would have been presented in front of a live audience. Think back to last Monday on Raw. We saw the retribution this week, but last Monday on Raw when um, Dominic Mysterio just simply got initiated worse than I think anyone has ever been initiated. Kendo stick shot after Kendo. Just think if there was a live audience there, uh, how how much I oh, won't horror. say greater, but, but how much yeah. more intense that situation would have been. I've seen pictures. I've seen videos from the Amway Center or the setup. Yeah. Nobody does production better than World Wrestling Entertainment, and they're going to prove that again come this Friday night on yeah. SmackDown, tomorrow night on SmackDown, when they deliver this very first effort. Uh, and, 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 you know, I'll say this, me, Dad. Some people are, you know, there have been posts on, on social media about the rules, if you will, that WWE has the fans that they're going to have in attendance. And the way they're doing it is fans will be able to participate. And there'll be a video wall, uh, which spans the uh, lower tier of the arena from, from one goal. side to the other. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people have been saying, oh, look, you can't wear other companies' clothing. You know what? Stop. It's <laughs> WWE. It's a television entity. They are producing mm-hmm. a show to produce or present, rather, to millions. And it's fully within their right to say what you can and can't wear because – it's not a First Amendment thing, and that's one thing you know I've spoken about on this no. show a long time ago. You have a First Amendment, they have a First Amendment, and their First Amendment trumps your First Amendment because their First Amendment is what they are broadcasting under. It's so, funny you bring that up, Damien, because again, you know, I talked to Dave, and I've been talking for some reason. I don't know what, Dave? but what bug kind of crawled up in me, but you know what show I went back and watched on the WWE network? It was the August 10th taping for the August 16th row of 1999 Jericho second day. You were at the first one. I was at the second one. I had that very thing happen to me where one of the WWE producers, you know, uh, the ringside people come over and go, you're going to need to take that shirt off. Here's a WWE Raw's war shirt. Really? I said, fine. Don't you remember what? that? I wore that on the TV show with you guys. What uh, shirt were you wearing? I was wearing a Monday Night Jericho shirt, ah. a WCW Jericho shirt, because I only came to see Chris Jericho. Um, after I put on the Raw's War shirt, then I held up the Jericho shirt like a sign. He goes, this is your last chance. Yeah. Ugh, fine. Yeah, no, I mean, well within their right. And that's how I stayed in the show. So, I mean, like I said, it's just ironic that you bring that up, and I've actually dealt with that personally. Um, Thunderdome, I'm very excited to find out what it is. I don't know if I'm excited to see all the fans. I don't know if I'm e- I'm excited for something else, really. Yeah. I'm ready for the next thing. We need a change of pace. This will be a change of pace. And again, no one does production like WWE. They're going to blow us away, I'm sure. They're going to add new elements. Just being in that arena environment will afford them the opportunity to do more with their presentation. And they need to do more. The ratings have been stagnant. You know, I feel about ratings, but comparing them to themselves, the ratings have been stagnant for quite some time. They need to get into a new environment. Now, this, too, will at some point get old. Uh, we know there I think they've got room to move things around, though. Yeah, they're taking up residency through at least the next month, maybe two months or more. Uh, probably to the end of the year, and and okay. who knows what's going to happen with this COVID environment, which is just getting old at this point. But uh, they can mix it up a little bit. They don't have the limitations of the performance center. And, and let's go back, talk, talk again about the WWE production team. What they did to make the performance center look as great as it did deserves a lot of credit. Yeah, And uh, I don't think they've gotten that credit that they deserve for what they did. We'll see, and we'll be able to enjoy under it the conditions further. as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, can you imagine? Let's talk a little bit more Thunderdome. Can you imagine if they didn't use Thunderdome and they had to do the Royal Rumble in the Performance Center? And just oh, and here comes the next person. <laughs> It'll be like WrestleMania was in the performance uh, center. It, it, you know, I don't knock any of the talents they delivered. They did what no. they could. 
Um, I'll still say for anyone who will listen that the Randy Orton and uh, Edge match was just entirely too long. But, um, you know, being in this new environment is going to be great. Having the fans involved, and it looks like, depending on what report you read, the fans are going to be able to participate in 15-minute increments, which is probably good. I heard you signed up as well. Are you going to be one of those people? Absolutely not. (laughs) <laughs> one of the uh, one of the great things as well is that they indicated in their rules that <laughs> you what it, it said something to the effect of clothes must be worn at all times. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I can't next, sign up. <laughs> right. The next story that's going to be great is when somebody pulls something, and who knows if they're going to be live or on a seven second delay, right. fourteen second delay, or whatever. Uh, but somebody is going to get in there and they're going to pull something and. It's going to be uh, an interesting watch for sure. And again, you know, we're watching it live. So, I mean, you know, they could be on the 7 or the 14, but, you know, those sensors for the WWE have to be on it because that stuff doesn't go away. Everybody's got DVRs and can screen cap everything. Oh, yeah. So, hey, let's talk NXT from last night. So uh, we had two more matches to fill in the final two spots for the North American uh, five-man ladder match that's going to happen at NXT 30 this Saturday. First match was going to be Johnny Gargano looking to become the first ever two-time North American champion, taking on Ridge Holland. Uh, Gargano wins uh, to qualify for the match. I thought it was a pretty solid match. Um, we also had Dakota Kai against Jesse uh, Kamiya, Kamaya, Kamiya, you know, the good, the Kimono Monolea. Kimono I mean, Monolea. Yeah, yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> WCW 2000. Or, uh, yeah, 2000. Uh, Legato del Fantasma versus Brazango and Zaya Swerve Scott. Legato del Fantasma, of course, with the win. Looking really strong here with our boy DJ Z on that team as well. Here's the thing I want to discuss. Adam Cole invited Pat McAfee in. Pat McAfee shows up to the building, and he's got four or uh, three other football players with him. I recognize A.J. Hawk, former Ohio State University player and longtime Green Bay Packer, middle linebacker, has a Super Bowl ring with the Packers. Uh, the other ones I didn't recognize, but that I was uh, that was that was that was uh, L.T. and Pat McAfee. Yeah, it was LT, and I'm pretty sure you had like Ken Norton Jr. in there too, right? <laughs> Reggie White, he was on Kevin the Green, team and at uh, WrestleMania 11, wasn't he? Yeah, it was 11. So, no, but the point I want to discuss here is, and I want to hear your opinion on this, Pat McAfee and Adam Cole. Adam Cole had been healed this whole time. Why would they make Adam Cole the face for this? Because Pat McAfee literally just comes in, and the angle he's playing is wrestling is, he doesn't say the word fake, but wrestling is a bunch of punks. Your community's a bunch of punks. Everybody in this locker room's a bunch of punks. And I've been a millionaire in other sports, and I'm going to be a millionaire here, too, and I'm going to kick your teeth in. You, you know, here's the challenge, Meathead. It just doesn't feel real. It feels like WWE's constant desperation for mainstream attention, right. and it just doesn't feel real. We talked about, I think on Primetime with Shane Helms a couple of weeks back, about how great it was back in the day when LT, I joked earlier, but when LT was attacked by Bam Bam Bigelow at at, uh, Royal Rumble 95, leading into WrestleMania 11, you felt it. You felt it was real. You felt he was a true insider coming in. You felt it was new, not really, but it was special. This is lacking that. Adam Cole is fantastic. Pat McAfee is actually a great character in professional wrestling. Yes. But I just... I just but he don't trashed feel wrestling it. in general. So what's the point? And, and well, 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 he needs to. Typically, people that come into that role, they do that. I just don't feel it. I don't care. I guess is what I can say. I'm not looking forward to their matchup at NXT on Saturday up against Dynamite, sort of, kind of, but not really. And uh, you know, to that point, me dad, I will say this: not to change subject, but change subject. Typically on this show, we get to talk about what happened last night on Dynamite. There yeah. was no Dynamite last night, but they did do a brilliant thing. They offered part one. They're splitting it into two parts. They offered part one of their very first All Out event. Yep. And one thing I saw that I did not see because I had never watched that event was the debut of one Orange Cassidy. Now, if you've listened to this show for any period of time, you know I am a huge fan of Orange Cassidy after not understanding what an Orange Cassidy was. But now that I, I wouldn't even say I understand it, but I appreciate it in such a way that he is just phenomenal. I appreciate and get it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, there. Uh, let's run down the schedule here. So, yeah, I mean, you kind of let it into that. I was going to get there, but let's do it now. So uh, we had part one of All Out from last year. Then uh, we're going to have part two air on the 26th next week, Wednesday, on the website as well. So AEW Dynamite will be airing, as you mentioned. It will be kind of head-to-head, but not really. It'll go on at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern this Saturday or when the NBA game ends. Now, it has been taped already. We'll run down the matches in just a second. Uh, no spoilers here. Spoiler-free zone. So uh, the matches will be happening this Saturday. But uh, I think they're doing a great thing. Here's another thing they're doing with the NBA playoffs in September. There's going to be a special one-hour dynamite on Wednesday, September 16th, following the playoffs. Then that Thursday, they're going to put on their proper dynamite. AEW is really working hand-in-hand this time with TNT, unlike what TNT did to kind of WCW. You know, I got to say, though, this is a challenge. This is a challenge for AEW because they have such, they have rather such great momentum. Four week yeah. winning streak in the ratings, demo god, Chris Jericho, all of that stuff. It's very difficult to retrain a viewer. A lot of people, and they did a great job on social media promoting it, talking about it, but a lot of people tuned in last night to see AEW, wonder where it was, and they're not going to put forth any further effort to watch it on Saturday night. So we'll see what happens. This is for the next, you know, what, three or four weeks here. That uh, AEW about a month is gonna, ish. About yeah, a month, yeah. That they're going to be displaced. And uh, it, it, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, you know, it's, it's almost back to the raw days of the displacement for the Westminster Kennel Club <laughs> dog show. Yeah. And uh, that one Monday night or the U.S. Open. They actually yeah, got true. displaced for that, too. AEW's got to maintain momentum on a different night, and uh, it's going to be a challenge for them to do so, but I wish them the best. Yeah, Real quick, we missed one thing from uh, NXT. The last qualifier, Finn Balor versus Velveteen Dream. Uh, Dream defeats Balor by pinfall to qualify for the last spot in the North American Championship ladder match. Uh, Velveteen Dream is back. Um, the commentating team, I want to ask you this real quick. Um, the commentating team is now Vic Joseph, who was on Raw and has now returned to NXT. You got uh, Moro. Um, I never can pronounce his last name. I always forget it. Ronaldo. Moro Ronaldo and Beth Phoenix. Moro is a great play-by-play guy, but he can be overwhelming at times. And nope. Vic Joseph is a play-by-play guy. It's too much. Hey, so uh, Vic Joseph is great. Vic Joseph, I think, got uh, a raw deal in his stint on Raw because remember he did. when. SmackDown moved to Fox. They reshuffled the broadcast yep. teams. Going and then had the Vic, team Jerry, and uh, Booker, I think. Yeah, they were going with a younger team on Raw and a more veteran team on SmackDown. And Vic Joseph uh, got shafted in that deal. He's great. He's been great. I've worked with him. I've met him. Uh, he is he is a good talent. I'm glad to see him back on NXT. Yeah. Uh, they shouldn't be using, what's his name, Tom, Ted, Todd Phillips, or whoever. Uh, Todd maybe. Phillips. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's great. He's doing a great job on Raw, but it was a bit of a – uh, not overexposure, but a bit, a bit too much. Saturation. Uh, you know, Moro, Mor- he, so he's not too much. He's today's JR of the 90s and 2000s. Sure. I'll, I'll and buy that. What was so great about the Attitude Era was how JR and Jerry Lawler, that great team of broadcasters, brought us into the story. Moro Ronaldo brings us into the story as well. And, um, you know, that's something that's been missing. We've gone through several eras of commentary. We went through the laughing era where Cole would, and, 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 and the raw broadcast team would laugh out audibly at everything that was, uh, not everything, but at a good amount of things that were happening yeah. on air. And then we went to the more serious and silent approach. You know, we need as viewers that passion, that drama, that intensity. Connect the story for me. Bring me into the arena if I'm watching at home. And that's what Jim Ross did so well. That's what Mauro Ronaldo do so, does so well. He does. Michael Cole, by the way, does a tremendous job at it as well. It's just a different way of presenting it. Yeah, and my beef isn't with the man and his presentation. It's with the, it seems that he's so much to me that it seemed like he was stepping on Vic Joseph and Beth Phoenix a lot of times. Yeah, fair enough. So, again, it's not him. I mean, if he were to, if he were to go Joey Styles and call the whole show, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I, I think we need a little more, though. You need a mix, I guess. All right. Let's talk real quick. Uh, TNT, uh, AEW Dynamite this Saturday. Here's the matches that we have. 
The American Nightmare Cody is going to go up against Mr. Brody Lee. This will be for the TNT Championship match. The Elite, uh, it'll be Kenny Omega, Matt Jackson, and Nick Jackson taking on the Dark Order, <laughs> number three, number four, and number five. Alex Reynolds, John Silver, and Alan Angels. We will not get JR going, uh, uh, what is his name? Uh, John, don't call me Dick Grayson. Uh, I love that uh-huh. commentary. Uh, the uh, FTR is apparently the number one tag team contenders. And they will take on Private Party. The Women's Tag Team Cup Finals will be there. The Nightmare Sisters, Brandy Rhodes and Allie, taking on uh, Diamante and Ivelisse. Medusa in the house on Saturday night will be presenting the cup. And finally, the Lucha Brothers, Pentagon Jr., Ray Phoenix, The Butcher and Blade, taking on Jurassic Park, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, and The Natural Nightmares, Cutie Marshall and Dustin Rhodes. Also, Darby Allen in action. So lots of big stuff happening on Saturday night. Demi, what are you looking forward to? Uh, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to Darby Allen. Darby Allen is is just a fantastic talent. And as we talk about Darby Allen, we should not forget to talk about Ricky Starks as well, the one that he is feuding with at this point. What a promo he cut on Dark on Tuesday. Uh, and you know, I've talked on our shows for a long time about just how amazing Ricky Starks is, and 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 yeah. this will be met with opposition. But when I look at him, when I listen to him talk, when I hear him cut a promo, I think of one man, and that is The Rock. Not because what? not because Ricky Starks refers to himself in the third person, but because the flow, and you know flow. You're talking about his cadence. The flow, the cadence, the everything in the presentation is hmm. just tremendous. Ricky Starks is one of the... So I'll say this, Ricky Starks is the future of this business, but as is the combination of not in a story, not together, but Ricky Starks, Orange Cassidy, Darby Allen, um, there are so many people who are reshaping and redefining what pro wrestling will be going forward, and they're all right now in AEW. Yeah, they absolutely are. A tremendous week of action. Damien, uh, I don't want to go too deep into this, but think of this. Tonight, and you've got the... Hold on, I've been practicing. May I? <clears throat> oh, please. Tonight on the Super Show! show that was, show, a, show, that show. was okay. That was okay. Uh, I don't do an echo. I do. Uh, I love the... Reading. And by the way, so the people at home are completely satisfied, it is tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern, live on Fight TV. That's F-I-T-E Fight. Fight TV, and across our social media channels, Dave, myself, David Hero, and Sugar Shane Helms, I can call him that when we're not on primetime, will present the primetime Super Show okay. for the masses to watch, learn, listen, and observe. And we got Be the Booker as well that we got to do for NXT TakeOver 30 and, and also SummerSlam. SummerSlam. Uh, which will be from the Thunderdome. I, they really should have come up with a better name. <laughs> I asked Dave on uh, Tuesday morning, did they clear that? What, what movie house owns that? Is that Time Warner? I mean, who owns that? Did they clear that with them? Well, look, they know. did it. They did it uh, what does Eric Bischoff say and have said for a long time? Controversy creates cash. They did it because people are going to crap on the name. Yep. But people are going to talk about the name. And they're, they're going to remember the name. It. And uh, you know what? I, I have more credit to them because it has worked. Hey, one thing, Meathead, also, I don't know how we're doing on time, but news. I talk earlier, to the people. You know, we can go. Go ahead. Uh, I'm strictly 20 minutes. <laughs> Keep going. But uh, earlier today, or yesterday, rather, late yesterday, news broke that Renee Young had given her notice to WWE yeah. and would be leaving, which I'm shocked why so many people are shocked. For this, her husband or her fiance, I don't know if they're married, but her significant other, her significant other, John Moxley, of course, the champion of AEW, uh, she went over to WWE from TSN, I believe, in Canada, working with our dear friend Arthur O'Cal, and, uh, you know, had a good run. Uh, She's tremendous. She was given an opportunity. She was once a broadcaster or a commentator on Raw, and now is seemingly moving on to other things. A lot of people assuming that other thing is going to be AEW, yeah. but perhaps it makes more sense for her to find a more a uh, more broad-based broadcast entity to appear on. 
Well, not just that, too, but if she were to do AEW, and that's, where, of course, where the speculation is going to go. If she were to do AEW, the schedule is probably a little looser, just like back in the day with WWF versus WCW, where, you know, you had a bigger, wide-open schedule. You could take other bookings. You could do movies. You could do other programs. There's a cookbook, apparently, out there that she's going to be doing as well. So, Yeah. So, uh, but I wanted to get to this real quick. And like I said, I don't want to go down this too much. You talk about Be the Burker and you talk about the super show or the super, you know, show. We've got a lot of stuff happening and popping over at the PWR draft. This week, we've already got a preview up. I mean, ready to go. That's all, all set to go. But you know what? That means we also have next week, we've got WWE payback. The week after that, we've also got AEW all out. We have tons of points, points on points on points on points for you not to win. Mo money, mo money, mo money. It's an active, uh, it's an active couple of weeks in professional wrestling. Look, there's a reason. I think back to the last time, and I, I, this probably wasn't the last time, but the last time I remember WWE doing such a uh, um, frequent schedule of pay-per-views back-to-back was so, uh, the Survivor Series 1990 or 91, whichever one it was, leading into this Tuesday in Texas, uh, which they pretended like they hadn't planned to do. But that was the great story of The Undertaker and Hogan. Yeah. And the Undertaker winning the championship at the Survivor yep. Series, giving it back at the this Tuesday, Tuesday in, in Texas. Texas. So it was, yeah. a, it was a three-day reign. Look, uh, the answer is probably right in front of us again. Uh, this whole Dominic Mysterio, Seth Rollins story, I think, is going to pay out at payback uh there's a reason they're doing them one week after one another firstly is to add value to the wwe network but um they got to deliver heavily and strongly at SummerSlam in order to get me to be intrigued by what they're going to plan to present at uh payback uh the next week on so pay-per-view. just for the clarification wwe payback is a qualifying event for points Hey, the draft by which I'm winning. Uh, Again, Damien, I've talked to the people. Look, I would like to meet Ed. We we are on the last night tonight of the Democratic National Convention. No matter your party affiliation. That was supposed to be in Milwaukee, by the way. I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for nominating me as the winner of the Pro Wrestling Report Fantasy Draft for yet another year. Uh, and, And I'm very, very enthused and happy that people put their partisan differences aside and realize that I am the man to lead this draft into the next year and to lead this draft into the next series of time or the next period of time. And I appreciate and respect and thank everyone for coming out and showing that I could be their leader, including those who voted by by mail. (laughs) All I ask, Damien, and I've, I'm going to ask this every time we bring this up, make sure the parade's ready, because I'm the whiz, and nobody beats me. <laughs> well done. So, we're good. That's uh, We didn't go 20. Maybe you meant all your talking added up to 20, and then the rest of the stuff I added. So, Are you saying <laughs> long-winded or detailed? Sure, we'll do both of those. We don't have those crickets on standby, do we? I don't hear them. <laughs> well, it's because the exterminator took care of him. You know, it's interesting. The crickets are usually on the David Hero night. <laughs> Funny enough. You know, we missed the David Hero show. Oh, wait, you oh, don't you miss know. it, but the rest of us miss it. So for Damien Nelson, I'm the man they call me today. Hey, thanks for stopping by. So long, everyone. <laughs>